Good afternoon, YouTubers. Welcome back in to another season of Astros Recap. This is David Artis back. Another year, 2024. Uh, it is 2.28 p.m. This is my first podcast of this year. I know it's March 1st now. Um, but uh, we've had issues with the computer. Uh, I plan to actually do this podcast just to kick off the year last week. But the computer didn't work. For some magical reason, it actually worked today, so that's why I'm doing this now. Um, but uh, just a few things to just you know kick off, uh, you know this season of Astros baseball. A few things: one, same microphone, same camcorder here in front of me. Um, I hope uh, all this stuff works properly. The computer might come and go. We'll have to wait and see on that. Uh, I do have a fan down here. Uh, so if you hear some background noise, it's just a fan. I need a fan because I can't use this one. That's too distracting. So, Also, this is my usual spot. Something different you see in the background. This Coca-Cola sign right over here was just put up. It was like a Christmas gift. So this room, you can't see it, but just that. And you see maybe a plaque over my shoulder, barely, partially. <laughs> but this room's a Coca-Cola room. It's the guest room in the house here. But there's Diet Coke and Coke stuff everywhere in here. So that's sort of what this, I just look around in front of me here and everything. Got a bed over here to my left. Uh, it's all just Coca-Cola stuff or Diet Coke. So yes, um, that's that's a little different right there. So uh, you just see the very end of a Coca-Cola sign that was yeah, a Christmas gift. Um, so yeah, anyway, um, this 2024, I started these back actually doing these podcasts in 2017. So I did not post those. Uh, I just used my phone basically. I recorded myself talking Astros baseball every week. But 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, and now we are here 24. I actually started about halfway through the 2017 season when the Astros were playing good baseball and it felt like a special, special year and they won the World Series. So... Yeah, I started basically in June that year, so it wasn't the start of the year. And then every year since, I've been doing it, and I enjoy it. And you know, I, I know I don't get a lot of views, don't have a lot of subscribers, but I, I like to do this also for me. This gives me a chance to you know talk things out as I talk to you. Um, but new season, I'm not going to break a whole lot of news. Spring training just started. This is like the second week. Or the, their first game was actually I think last Saturday, so. They've only played a week of spring training, but we'll talk about some players. Uh, obviously, again, I haven't spoken to you since like late, super late October of last year, right after the Rangers won the World Series. So um, it's been a while. I usually try to get on sometime in January. I did not this year, but you know, usually that's more so if there's been a lot of. Uh, trades or acquisitions for agent signings, things like that. Astros didn't have a lot of that. A few. I'll talk about here in a few minutes, but um, not a not a big uh, off-season. I feel like just around baseball in general. I mean, the Astros signed a few uh, players, of course, but uh, you talk about, you know, like Shohei Otani went to the uh, Dodgers. That was like the big big uh, sort of signing, because obviously he's like the biggest attraction of baseball, of course. But, you know, Juan Soto going to the Yankees, that was sort of a big one. But I just feel like, <clears throat> off the top of my head, I can't think of a, a bunch of big moves that were made. And maybe it's just slipping my mind at the moment. But I didn't feel like it was a crazy... Like, usually in December, you get the winter meetings. And that usually... That's usually when so stuff starts to come out in terms of, you know, signings, trades, things like that. But I just didn't feel like it was a big year in that sense, especially in December. Uh, most teams were waiting for the Otani. I think Otani was supposed to be the first move, and then the dominoes would start to fall after that. But I didn't even feel like that was a big... There weren't a whole bunch after the Otani signing. I mean, the Dodgers also signed the big pitch show to Japan. I can't even say his name. Um, <laughs> I'd have to look it up, actually, to... Uh, even think of the name because I don't want to even think about it. I'm going to get it here. Excuse me while I look this up. 
and those that know uh, Yamamoto. I'm just gonna say his last name because I can't even try to pronounce his first name. But Yamamoto was the big guy they got. They paid him one three hundred million dollars along with Otani. Now Otani can't pitch this year, and they still are loaded. But the Dodgers probably won't win the World Series. I'll go on the limb and say that. But but they they they're loaded with uh, players, so they're all in this year. But they've been made the biggest splash of the offseason, getting Otani and signing Yamamoto here. So they also signed Tyler Glass now. That was another guy. Um, trying to think what else. And they still have, you know, Will Smith catching, Freddie Freeman at first, Mookie Betts at second. Um, I, I'm not going to go through the entire roster here, but yeah, they're 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 pretty loaded in terms of players. So yeah. But the Astros acquisitions in the offseason, obviously, the biggest thing I think when the season ended was a left fielder because Brantley retired. But before any of that actually happened, so I don't even know exactly where I left off. I probably should have listened to my last podcast before I got on here. But they, um, Joe Espada got promoted from bench coach to now manager, which I was uh, happy about. In fact, I wanted to... Uh, I wanted a spot to be the manager after they fired A.J. Hinch before the 2020 year, and they went Dusty Baker. So, you know, Dusty was here five years. Kind of weird to think about, but Dusty was here five full years. You know, 2020 was the COVID year, his first year, but 2021, 22, 23, and 24, you know, he was signing one-year deals, I think, the last two years, but it's kind of crazy to think Dusty was here for five years. It just doesn't feel like it was that long. And A.J. Hinch was here for also five years because he got hired back in 2015, and he went through 2019. And then Dusty, so you had A.J. for five years, Dusty for five years. And that was sort of the changing. When the Astros finally started, you know, playing better baseball, that was the A.J. Hinch era and the Dusty Baker era. But before that, I mean, what do you think of Bo Porter, Brad Mills? It was all pretty bad in those years. So, um, But now we move to Joe Espada. Spot has been here for a while. He actually, in 2017, was the third base coach for the New York Yankees. 2018 was his first year as bench coach here in Houston, and I kept waiting for him to be hired. Um, it's a, a miraculous to me that he actually stayed as our bench coach for as long as he did, because I know he was getting interviews, but I, I am glad he, he stayed, stuck around and, and now finally um, is our uh, manager. So. We'll see the differences between Dusty. Dusty just, that last season was <laughs> hard to defend Dusty a lot uh, last year with some of the decisions he made. Um, two, I think, of right off the bat. Obviously, and this was all Astros fans, the whole catching situation with Maldi and Yanir Diaz. I mean, Maldi struggled offensively like he always does, but, I mean, he hits 150. Yannir was hitting in the 260s, 270s, and he was bopping home runs when he got his opportunity to play. And Dusty was just stuck in his ways, and he had this obsession with Maldi. And the, part of that is the pitching. Like, when they you know made the trade for Verlander, he liked Maldi. I think Robert Valdez liked Maldi, so they had some say there. But another thing, this was big for me, Jose Abreu hit fifth in the order for way too long. I mean, Dusty just never moved him out. And it was a, it was just a black hole right in the middle of the lineup every day. It felt like having Jose Abreu hit in fifth. I would have had him hit in probably seventh if I was managing. We'll see the differences, um, but I do like Joe Espada. Now nothing's been done yet this season. Nothing I can get mad at quite yet. So <laughs> we'll see. But I had my issues with AJ Hinch, and I had my issues, of course, with Dusty Baker. So we'll see. But so far, I mean, just in spring training and, and since Espada's had the job, I mean, he's been pretty transparent. Like, he, or a pretty blunt enough for I mean, He basically said, I mean, uh, you look at the acquisitions, and this isn't breaking news, obviously. I'll just go ahead right now. But Josh Hader, obviously the big acquisition, he already said that he's the closer. He's, he's, he got it in front of Mike and in one sentence said, if Presley and Hader are both available, Hader's going to close. And I kind of like that. Dusty would never be that upfront and blunt about things like Joe Spottle was just clearly there. So 
I do like that as well. But yeah, Hader was the big news, the big signing, obviously. The Astros did not re-sign any of those pitchers. Nair, I, I can't remember exactly the teams. I think Nairis went to the Cubs, actually, Hector Nairis. Uh, but Phil Maton, I think maybe the Tampa Bay got him. I could be wrong, and I'd love to hear your comments, obviously, in the section below. But, and then, of course, Ryan Stanek. So all of them were gone. And that was a big thing in the offseason. They were going to have to find a way to add some pitchers. They got the biggest guy, at least on the market, Hader, and he is now the closer. Uh, they also added uh, Dylan Coleman was another guy from Kansas City who was not very good last year, but I think two years ago he was pretty solid. So he's really going to get his chance here in spring training to see what he can do. Uh, Bennett Sues is another guy. Now, that's not an acquisition. They had him last year. But he came very, very late in the year, so late to where he didn't qualify for the you know, postseason roster because he didn't join the team till like, mid-September. Now, he's a lefty who can hopefully – I mean, he was good in the very limited sample size he showed us last year, but if he can be a lefty, you know, that can help us and be the situational guy that the Astros have never had, I feel like, uh, as a left-handed reliever, a guy that you can depend on to get lefties out, something they've lacked. Now, they have right-handed relievers that can get lefties out, but they haven't had that one guy situationally they can turn to, and I think Bennett Souza might have the opportunity to be that guy. Um, so those are the three guys really in the bullpen. I'm trying to think if they added any more. Uh, not off the top of my head. I could be forgetting a few people or one or two guys. We'll have to wait and see. But, yeah, Hader, Dylan Coleman, and Bennett Souza are the three sort of new guys to the bullpen. Uh, again, Souza was here last year, but uh, very late. Came in late, late, late in the year. So, Anyway, so yeah, obviously backup catcher. They needed one after they let Maldi go. Maldi goes to the White Sox, and they get Victor Caratini. Knew the name, didn't know much about him, where he played. Uh, if you were to ask me to guess before the trade was made or when the trade was made, I would have said he sounded like a – I don't know why, for what, what, we, what reason I say this, but he felt like a San Diego Padre, but that's not correct. He was – I can't remember where he was. I can look this up as well, and I hate doing this as I'm trying to speak, but um, <laughs> Victor Caratini will get the uh, starts when Yanair is not. So um, I don't see if I can find some numbers on him as well. But um, I think he did play. He played for the Padres at some point, but I'm also seeing the Cubs here. So... Um, see if I can find this here, if I can just baseball reference or where, wherever he was. Um, Chicago, I think, most recently, but before... No, hold on. I'm wrong. He was with Chicago for, like, six years. San Diego in 21-22, that's probably where I remember him, and he was with Milwaukee last year. But I look at average. I know I know the o, o, OPS number's big for people now. I don't like to look at that. I'm going to have to start to, I guess. But um, just looking at last year's numbers, if I can just get a general idea. He hit, three, he hit 379 last year? That seems high. I don't know if I'm looking at that right. Again, he didn't play a ton of games. He had 29 ABs last year. He had 20 ABs the year before. So I don't even know if I'm looking at this right. Let's make his career. I mean, his career numbers here. Okay. His career batting average is three. That even seems high. Three fifteen. Now. I don't know how accurate this actually is here. So. But again, he hasn't. He's been a backup his entire uh, entire life. So I'm not expecting huge things from Caratini. Just hit me two fifty and be a viable backup for, um, yeah, for, for Yonder Diaz, and, and things should work out there. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, Hader was the uh, other big side. There wasn't a whole lot. I'm trying to think if, because uh, Coleman was, I think the Dylan Coleman signing was right after Caratini. And at that point, really, you didn't think they'd do a whole lot more. 
Um, now they they needed a left a left fielder basically. I mean you have Jordan out there, but they needed a left fielder to sort of take the pressure off of Jordan playing out there because I don't want Jordan out there any more than if it was me at 50, 60 games. I would just DH him full time if you're asking me. Actually, just you know, because I don't want him out there risking injury in left field now. I think he's a pretty solid left fielder. Like he doesn't move very well, but I think his arm's pretty good. Um, I haven't had issues Jordan in the outfield, you know, with fly balls. He's pretty good at you know, tracking down fly balls. Now, I don't see him get tested. Like I don't want him laying out for fly balls. And Minute Maid Park is an easy left field to play because there's just not a whole lot of room out there. But yeah, I don't want to see Jordan out there more than 50 games if it was up to me, to be quite honest. So they needed a left fielder or a corner. I mean, you have Tucker, obviously, in right. Center field, I've never really liked the situation out there. It's been McCormick, mostly. Myers, here and there. Myers looked like he'd be the guy. And then he had that injury in 2021 and that sort of has ruined his career, it feels like, ever since. So, uh, But they're going to roll with Myers again this year. Um, they're they're going to play Myers a lot in center field. And the days Jordan's not left, they're going to have McCormick out there. So this is, I keep saying this is Myers' last chance, but this has got to be it. They, they want him to be, they've given him enough opportunity. Um, 2022 coming back. Last year, 23. He did perform pretty well, I feel like, at one point. It was early in the season, actually. Because McCormick got hurt, and Myers got all the starts in center field. Or he got all the starts in the outfield. Um, and during that time, McCormick was hurt, and he was playing every day. He actually saved himself, or at least saved himself the job, or a roster spot. But again, McCormick came back, Myers sort of was hot at one point, got cold. I just don't know what to expect. We're going to hope for the best, but if they want him in center field, I think, most, at least half the year this year. So it would be interesting to see if he can carry his weight from a hitting standpoint. They like his defense. Uh, that's fine. I don't think McCormick's a huge downgrade if he's playing center field, but I've never been a huge Chaz McCormick guy. He just strikes out too much for me. I think he did cut back a little bit last year. Like 2022 McCormick was a strikeout machine at the plate. I think last year things were a little bit better just because it wasn't so glaring to me, I guess. But uh, it'll be interesting to see McCormick this year again. If he can cut back the strikeouts, I think I'd be better. <laughs> but I've never been a huge McCormick guy just in general. So. I was a big Jake Myers guy, but Jake, I'm not going to defend Jake Myers anymore. He's proven to me that he can't get back to the pre-injury of 2021 playoffs. That Jake Myers was very good and looked like he was en route to being the everyday guy. He got hurt and has never been the same since, but he's getting another chance this year, so we'll roll with it and just hope for the best, I guess, right? Uh, Pena at short. I know I'm not talking acquisitions anymore. <laughs> I wanted them to grab another outfielder. Would have been nice. They did not do that. So Now, you still have Mauricio Dubon. That's another option you can place in the outfield. Uh, he was very good last year, so it's good to have Dubon back. And But I still want Dubon to be more of the utility guy. Uh, Greg Kessinger, I think, is probably going to make the roster. We'll see. We'll wait and see. I don't know. But they, like, they, Dubon will be there, obviously. The last few roster spots will come down to Really, who performs in spring training the best? I'm trying to think of the other options they'd have. Um, but yeah, I mean, Dubon plays everywhere, basically. So he's obviously going to be there. Greg Kessinger's a guy that just I can think of off the top of my head. There's a few other bench guys that they could go with. Uh, Corey Jolks is the other guy. And that's an extra outfielder if they go that route. Uh, obviously, Joel started the season on the team last year, but they sent him down, I want to say, close to midway through, and he really never came, might have came back up during September call-ups, but other than that, I mean, he wasn't, he wasn't really, I mean, he wasn't hitting well enough, so. But Jolks and, and, and Kessinger probably take up maybe that 26th, uh, 26th and final roster spot. We'll have to wait and see. Um, had something else I wanted to get to. 
pitching. Yeah, pitching. So we already had the injuries hit us. You know, we had that last year big time. Uh, but injuries to Justin Verlander, who's basically, I think he's okay, actually. Now, he might start the season in the DL. I'd probably expect that. But he said he was two weeks behind. So if he's two weeks behind, then I'd expect him to be two weeks behind come the start of the regular season. So he probably starts the season in the IL. Other guy, he just said he had some hiccup. I think he threw a bullpen, and hours after the bullpen, his arm felt sore or whatever. That sounds like a Lance McCullers type injury, right? <laughs> but, um, yeah, uh, Verlander's probably not making opening day roster, which means Fromber Valdez gets the start. And, again, I have no idea what to expect from Fromber Valdez, and I have no idea what to expect from Christian Javier. Those are two big question marks in the rotation. Now, if they're good, this rotation can be really good. If they're not, and they're sort of up and down, or they're a second half of what they were last year, they're not good options. So that's a whole wait-and-see type thing. I have no idea what to expect. I mean, you still got Hunter Brown there in the mix. J.P. France is the other guy that's sort of injured. He's got elbow inflammation, something along those lines. So he's a, probably another guy that does not make the opening day roster. Or he'd be on the IL, along with Verlander. So you already got two injuries, along with the two that are already injured. I mean, Luis Garcia is still recovering from Tommy John, so he won't be back until probably, if you're lucky, July. And I'm not convinced McCullers will ever probably pitch this year. He'll probably recover, get close to, probably get close, as close as you can get is throwing a bullpen, basically. But he'll probably throw a bullpen. My, my expectation for Lance McCullers, now I don't wish this upon anybody, but, I mean, with Lance McCullers, you get the track record right there, right? Lance McCullers, <laughs> my expectation is he'll probably get, he'll work him way back slowly, like he usually does. He'll throw his bullpen, because he'll get to a point where it's time to throw a bullpen, and his armor will be sore, and they'll shut him back down. So I'm not convinced Lance pitches this year. And, you know, that's just, that's how I feel. So, um, but yeah, people like Renel Blanco and Brandon Belak probably make the opening day roster because of the injuries. So, but when I think about starters, if it's Valdez going opening day, I'm guessing Christian Javier, too. And then what is it, like um, Hunter Brown, three, or Keedy, four, Belak, five. Maybe Belak, uh, or I think Blanco would probably be the guy to go to the bullpen if they want to go five, man. Now, early this year, when the season starts here, about a month, they don't have a lot of off days. Like, they got to play a, quite a few games, I think, in a row. And usually when that's the case, they like to go six-man rotation. Now, a spot may be different. We'll wait and see. Maybe he just wants to go five-man, and that shouldn't be a problem to go five-man rotation. But a lot of these pitchers, when you think about Javier and Hunter Brown, uh, J.P. France last year, of course, France yeah, France will start the season in the IL. But um, a lot of these pitchers, like, like, Javier, France, Hunter Brown have the excuse of the whole innings. They had never pitched this many innings in their entire life. So maybe that, like, Hunter Brown, who got worse and worse and worse as the season progressed last year, the innings were getting up there. But I, I, I don't want to say it's an excuse necessarily. There might be some truth to that, but... Like, Valdez doesn't have that excuse. Valdez has been here since 2018, okay? And now, some of that was out of the bullpen, and he made spot starts in 2018. 19 was in the bullpen. He was here the COVID year. That wasn't a long season, obviously. But 2021 and 2022, he was a fixture in the rotation. So he does not have the whole innings excuse of throwing a lot of innings. He does not have that excuse. Javier can use that. Hunter Brown can use that. J.P. France can use that. Um, but that's it. Um, so, yeah, I, 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 don't, I have no idea. There are so many question marks with this team. Now, if you're asking me now, I'd expect them to win somewhere in the 95-game range. Last year was a struggle, it felt like, with the injury. I don't like to blame injuries ever for anything, but they did have their fair share and it was just a struggle. It felt like the entire year. They still won 90 games last year, 90 and 72, 
and they won the division, but they were fighting until the final day. The Rangers were there, and Rangers obviously got hot in the postseason, and they won a World Series. So, you know, but, yeah, I mean, think about things. <laughs> um, question marks, what's Jeremy Pena? He had a terrible season last year. Can Alex Bregman, uh, he's now, uh, they have not signed him long term. And this is his probably, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm, I'm pretty positive in my thinking of this is his final year. I do not, do not think the Astros bring him back. They've talked about giving him an offer, but Bregman wasn't very good last year. Like, I put the spotlight on him last year, and he failed. In the bright light, he, he crumbled. Now, you look at the final numbers, he hit in the 260s, he, he drove in, uh, he had like 95 RBIs, I think he hit somewhere in the 20 range of home runs. The numbers weren't awful come the end of the year, but I just felt like throughout the entire year, he, he didn't, he wasn't very good. He 240 for the majority of last year. So, I mean, that's not what I would expect Bregman to be. I mean, Springer left, Correa left, it's time for Bregman, who's still here, to show up and prove that he's the guy. And he did not prove that enough to me last year. So, another chance for him. But he's, he's gone after this year. I think there's no way, no how, they keep him around. So, uh, which actually makes me think of my next point. Uh, Altuve did get extended, so that's no surprise. We knew he was going to get extended at some point. But he was entering his final year of his contract this year, along with Bregman. But now they have Altuve, Altuve five years after that, so... And I have no issue with Altuve. I want him to get into, get, get into Altuve. He's the most consistent. He needs to be a lifelong Astro because he's been the face of this team through thick and thin. And it's good they finally got that wrapped up and done deal with. And he'll be here through 2029, 20, which is good. Um, so, yeah. Yeah. Um, trying to think anything else. Uh, the other guy, Abreu. What will Jose Abreu be this year? So many question marks with Bregman, uh, Pena, Abreu, Valdez, Javier, Hunter Brown. I have no idea with a lot of these guys. What what will Yanir Diaz be like as the everyday guy now? We already talked about Jake Myers. Can he step up and prove he can be a, you know, fixture in the lineup? Um, so there's just a lot of questions, but I still expect the team to be good. Um... But, yeah, Brayu, second year, you're stuck with him for two more years. So last year was an awful year until the playoffs. That's when he stepped up. We're hoping we can get some of that uh, to carry over into this season. Hopefully he's fully healthy and ready to go and can put most of last year behind him um, and start fresh because it was not a good year for Jose Abreu. But a lot of question marks, and I'm going – I'm almost at 30 minutes here, so I don't want to take up way too much time here. But, uh, yeah, I'm going to plan here. Again, I'll be here all year. Uh, it's only March 1st right now, so I plan to speak to you March 27th, which is a Wednesday, I believe. But the Astros opening day is March 28th, and they play at 3 p.m., so ideally I'd like to get here Wednesday night, uh, give you sort of my opening day roster, lineup, uh, everything I can think of, and things I missed to right now, and give you, uh, that's, let's see, four weeks away? Or three weeks and six days away, basically? Or, let's see, three weeks and five days away, the 27th, that's when I expect to speak to you. And then from there, it will be mostly Sundays. I feel like last year worked pretty well doing, um, Sundays at the radio station because I usually have some time in the evening to, to you know, speak. And that's a lot easier than getting home at 8 or 9 o'clock and then being on here so late. Even though I do take Mondays off now, so that might not be a bad option. But either way you look at it, if it's Sunday and out of the radio station, it will be super late here. Uh, if they have an off day Monday, sometimes I get on those days as well because I'm not have to worry about, you know, getting in the game there. Um, but it's recapping the week, and I try to, you know, stick to bullet points for every every week. Uh, go through the game, talk about what's working, what's not working, what I like, what I don't like. And I love to hear your 
comments section below. Always read them. Always respond if warranted. Uh, but uh, yeah, I'm trying to think here. I probably missed a few things, you know. <laughs> but I wanted to just point out the big things. And the big signing, obviously, is Hater. And yeah, that back in the bullpen with Abreu. Abreu, Presley, and Hader looks pretty solid. I mean, if the Astros have a lead after six, we should be should be feeling good about things. <laughs> um, talked about Coleman, obviously. Uh, Bennett Souza. Uh, Montero still here. Can he, you know, that's another question mark we have. Can Montero show us more of, you know, more of the 2022 Montero than the last year, which he was a disaster last year. Uh, for the majority of the year. Got a little bit better. Second half of the year, finally when Dusty got it through his thick head that he could not be trusted in high leverage situations. But can Montero figure himself into a sort of sixth inning role where you can trust him? And again, you can't use Abreu, Pressing, and Hayter every single day. So they're going to have some people that they might have to lean on in the seventh or eighth inning in certain situations. Can Montero be that guy. And I would also expect Renel Blanco, if he's not in the rotation, to be in the bullpen. Or Brandon Belak, one of those two guys. I think Blanco having more bullpen experience in past years would probably be the first one to go to the bullpen. Belak probably makes the rotation. Don't like either of those guys necessarily. Don't think they're awful though. Um, but I don't necessarily expect big things from either one of them, but those are two guys that we just said probably make the opening day roster because of the injuries to Verlander and France, so yeah but yeah again, uh, again uh, Sunday is usually the, the big day, but I'm going to be looking to talk to you next Wednesday I'm up over 30 minutes, I'm going to wrap things up there, anything I missed again, three weeks, five days you'll hear from me Sunday or so Wednesday night Leading up to opening day Thursday, I would get on Thursday. However, Astros play at 3 p.m. opening day, so it's an earlier start than usual. So we'll have to wait and see. But hope you're along for the ride again this year. I look forward to speaking to you a lot going forward. I was a little later than I wanted to be doing this, but um, spring training started. We're, we're going, and I don't take a lot of stock or watch a whole lot of spring training. So I, you know, just can go based off numbers. But we'll, once spring training concludes in 20, the 27th of March, I'll sort of give you a rundown of everything and have more clarity on the roster and, and what the season looks like going forward, at least the first month opening day going forward. Have more updates for you. But we'll wrap things up there. See you in three weeks and five days, March 27th. You'll see me again.